Hey everyone, this is Catherine with Free Tours by Foot, and today we're going to talk about some of the best free things to do in New York City. New York City has a reputation for being a very expensive place, both to visit and to live in. Um, that can absolutely be true, but you do not have to spend a lot of money in order to have a great time visiting New York. So I'm going to walk you through our top 10 free things to do in New York City, as well as some honorable mentions. So our number one free thing to do in New York City is to visit Central Park. Central Park is an iconic spot in this city. Even if it weren't free, it is something I would tell you, you absolutely need to see when you're visiting here. My piece of advice about visiting Central Park is to not try to do it all in one day. Central Park is very, very large, 843 acres total. So I personally recommend thinking of it in sections, <laughs> thinking of it maybe in three sections, the lower section, the middle section, and the upper section. Uh, if you're curious about what you might see in one section versus another, uh, you can certainly go on our website, freetoursbyfoot.com. We actually have virtual walking tours of each of the three sections. So if you wanted to check those out, get an idea of maybe what's where. Um, they're all absolutely worth visiting, but I do recommend taking it in separate chunks or renting a bicycle and, and using that to get around a little bit faster. Our second top free thing to do in New York City is to walk across the Brooklyn Bridge. When the Brooklyn Bridge was finished in 1883, it was considered the engineering achievement of its time. It is an absolutely spectacular bridge, um, both the design of the bridge itself and also the views that you will get of the skyline and of the harbor when you're walking across the bridge. This is something absolutely not to be missed as well. You're gonna hear that a lot in this video because these are some really, really fantastic things to do. Um, you'll hear people argue for one side or the other as far as starting to walk across the bridge on the Manhattan side or on the Brooklyn side. They're both great. Do both if you have time. Uh, we actually have self-guided audio tours going from either direction, either starting in Manhattan or starting in Brooklyn. So you can really work it in for whatever works best in your day. Um, I do recommend if you have a chance, if you can try to time your walk across the Brooklyn Bridge to be at sunset. It's absolutely spectacular. And then you'll see the lights of Manhattan starting to come on as the sky is getting darker. And it's just really, really beautiful. Our third free thing to do in New York City is to ride the Staten Island Ferry. The Staten Island Ferry is technically a commuter ferry. It commutes uh, people that work uh, in Manhattan to and from Staten Island every single day, uh, runs back and forth between Staten Island Ferry Terminal and the southern tip of Manhattan. Even though technically it is a commuter ferry, it has become increasingly used by tourists as a sightseeing ferry, and with good reason. Um, you'll hear a lot of people say the best views of the Manhattan skyline are not from anywhere in Manhattan or even in Brooklyn. Uh, they're actually from the water, especially lower Manhattan skyline. If you can get out on the water, you are going to see some amazing things. And it's also used by a lot of people as kind of an alternative Statue of Liberty ferry. I want to be completely clear the Staten Island Ferry does not stop at Liberty Island. If you want to stop at Liberty Island and get off and actually walk around the statue, maybe walk up into the pedestal, the only way to do that is to take the Statue of Liberty Ferry and it is not free. But if all you really want is to get closer to the statue than you are, say, at the southern tip of Manhattan, you can absolutely take the Staten Island Ferry. It goes right by Liberty Island and it moves slowly enough that you really have an opportunity to take some nice photos and get a really, really good view of the Statue of Liberty. Our fourth thing on the list is to visit the 9-11 Memorial. Since the 9-11 Memorial was finished, this has been a go-to spot for tourists from all over the world. It is a really beautifully done memorial commemorating the tragic events of September 11th, 2001. Visiting the memorial is a great thing to do at any time of day, but I think I really personally recommend 
going at night. Um, seeing it all lit up is really, really beautiful. Um, and it's worth doing again, no matter what time of day you go. When you decide to go, um, again, we have a self-guided tour. We have an audio tour available. If you wanted to maybe know a little bit more about how the memorial was designed, how they selected what they were going to do in the redesign of this place. Uh, make sure when you go, you check out Liberty Park, very tiny one acre park, but you get this great view looking over uh, the entire World Trade Center Plaza. And, and I think you'll get some really nice photos. There's some sculptures and things that you should see in there. Um, and a bonus free thing, if you happen to be visiting on a Tuesday, is in the evening, on Tuesday evenings, the 9-11 Memorial Museum is free. Our number five thing on our, the list is to visit some neighborhoods. So a lot of people, when they come to New York City, they really stick to kind of the, the tourist highlights, going to the Empire State Building, going to the Statue of Liberty, going to Times Square. And, and you should absolutely do those things. Those are fantastic things to see while you're here. But I think what makes New York, New York, is all of our different neighborhoods. Each individual neighborhood, almost as their own small town, they each have their own character, a lot of different architecture from neighborhood to neighborhood, their own little neighborhood economy. And so if you go and see a lot of different areas, you will see not only where New Yorkers actually live, um, but all of the wonderful things that make each neighborhood unique and special and make this city what it is. Uh, we have so many neighborhoods you won't be able to hit all of them probably on your visit here but some of my favorites if you wanted to start off Greenwich Village, Soho, Chinatown, Harlem um, those are some great places to start we have tours in most of those neighborhoods if you wanted to get a little bit more you could always take uh, a pay what you wish walking tour with a group you could do a self-guided tour an audio tour but even if you just walk around and soak in the neighborhood a little bit, pop into some shops, try one of the local restaurants. Um, you'll start to see why people that live here love it so much. And we'll hope that you come back over and over and over again until you've seen every single neighborhood that the city has to offer. Uh, next up on the list is the High Line. The High Line is a pretty unique park. We have over a thousand parks in New York City. Um, so what makes the High Line stand out from all of these parks is that it's actually built on an abandoned railroad track. And what happened once this railroad was abandoned is a lot of growth started to happen. Plant growth started to happen up on the tracks. And even though you weren't supposed to, it became a very, very popular spot for adventurers and urban hikers who would sneak up onto the High Line and hike up and down the old rail tracks. That's when people started to notice that there was something really beautiful happening up there and it almost was park-like. And so in 2009, it officially became a park. Um, it has been extensively worked on and planted and the High Line has actually opened in various sections, but it's completed now. You can walk the entire thing. It's about a mile and a half if you go end to end. It is really beautiful and really special. You can start either at the south end of the High Line or at the north end of the High Line. On the south end, you're gonna be right down at Gansevoort Street. At the north end, you'll be up at the new Hudson Yards development. There's a lot to do on either end, so it doesn't really matter where you start. You'll have plenty to do in the neighborhood around it as well. Um, so next up, we're gonna talk about free museums. Most museums in New York City are not free. Most of them have an admission charge, but a lot of the museums that charge an admission have a free time or a free day. So it depends on which museum you're wanting to visit. I highly recommend though, when you start making a list of museums that you're particularly interested in, go to that museum's website, see what their free day or free time is. Some museums in New York, like the Museum of the American Indian, are always free. Same with Federal Hall National Memorial, the Federal Reserve Bank. Those are free at any time. The Natural History Museum and the Metropolitan Museum of Art historically were always pay what you wish. That is something that changed recently. Now there is actually an admission price, um, unless you are a resident of New York. If you are a resident of New York, those are still pay what you wish. Um, but you can always go 
online and check out any museum that you are looking to go and visit, see when their free period might be or how to get the very best deal on visiting that museum. There's plenty to see in museums without paying anything. And we have some wonderful museums in this city. Next up on the list is Grand Central Terminal, which I, uh, is personally one of my very favorite places in New York City. This is a train station, yes, but it is a Beaux-Arts masterpiece as far as the architecture. It's really spectacular and it has a really interesting history as well and lots of little nooks and crannies. I think most people are familiar with the main concourse, you know, the beautiful painted ceiling and the four-sided clock. And, and of course, yes, you should absolutely visit those, but should really try to spend a little bit of time there. Check out the Whispering Gallery, check out the Biltmore Room. Uh, we do have a self-guided tour, tour and an audio tour there. If you have the time and you're interested at all, I highly recommend it, you'll get more out of it. But even if you just go and walk through, take in the sights and spend a little time, you will not be sorry. It is a spectacular building and really shouldn't be missed while you're here in New York City. So the next thing on our list is checking out what is going to be seasonal. So this really does, of course, depend on when you're visiting. Um, but every season in New York has its own slate of free events that are going on. So it is summertime right now. There's a ton that happens for free in the summer. We have street fairs. We have summer concerts, including Summer Stage, which is a free concert series. Um, the New York Philharmonic plays free concerts throughout the, year, uh, the summer. There's Shakespeare in the Park. Um, there's a lot of great free things that happen in the wintertime, too. We have a lot of holiday markets that go on. Uh, Bryant Park ice skating rink is free admission. The only thing you have to pay for is renting your ice skates. You can go and check out all of the various decorated windows at department stores all over Manhattan. Uh, so there's a lot that goes on for free in each season. They're all different. They're all wonderful. So make sure you look at the calendar, figure out when you're going to be visiting and what might be going on for free right at that time. And last up on our list, our, our number 10 spot is to get a tourist pass. Now make no mistake, tourist passes are not free. <laughs> you definitely have to pay for them. But if you have the time and you do your research and really plan your day right, you can end up getting one or two free attractions every single day that you use your tourist pass. I know that looking at the tourist passes and all of the different options and all of the deflex pass versus this pass, it can be really, really daunting. Um, we do actually have a podcast episode on tourist passes, on picking the different ones, what the differences are, what might be the best. So do a little research. We're here to help you. We have a blog post. We have our podcast um, breaking down some of the different options. Do your research and figure out what might be the very, very best thing for you on your trip. So we do have a couple of honorable mentions, things that didn't quite crack our top 10, but are definitely worth a mention here at the end. One of them is going to a TV show taping. A lot of shows, including Jimmy Fallon's show, uh, Seth Meyers, uh, Stephen Colbert, a lot of these shows film right here in New York City. And you can go to those tapings, surprisingly, absolutely free. Now, sometimes it's a lottery drawing. Sometimes it involves waiting in a line outside in a standby line, but it is a great thing to do, especially if you're a fan of these shows, seeing how they're put together and being a part of the action, being a part of that live audience really is an amazing experience and I highly recommend it. Next up on our honorable mention list is to go hear some gospel music. We have some churches in New York City that are really, really well known for their gospel music, uh, particularly in Brooklyn and in Harlem. And this has become an increasingly popular thing to do for visitors in New York City. Two things I would tell you if you decide to go and do this, and you should, it's amazing. One is please remember this is somebody's church service. It's not a concert. So, you know, don't whip your phone out and take videos. Um, 
really most churches will encourage you please stay for the entire service they don't want people popping up and down and going in and out of the the church during their service um, and while it is free to to go of course it is it's a church service um, it really is nice especially if you are a visitor to make a small donation if you are able to. You don't have to, but it is a nice thing to do if you can. And the other thing I would tell you is uh, a lot of these churches, people still really dress for church service. So this isn't the place for, for ripped jeans and things like that. Uh, it, it's nice if you can dress up a little bit to go. And last up on our list here is to go and check out some street art. Um, street art is really fantastic here in New York City. We have a lot of neighborhoods that are known for it, but if you could only choose one, I would recommend Bushwick. It's kind of our street art capital. Uh, it's some really amazing stuff there. If you are interested and you want a little more information uh, about the neighborhood and about some of the artists, definitely consider taking a street art tour in Bushwick. It's really incredible. And this is something because the art changes constantly, you can do every time you come here and you'll see different things every single time. So that is the end of our list. Hopefully I have, have made the case and, and made you see that you don't have to spend a lot of money to have a great time in New York City. There's so much you can do for absolutely free. We hope you'll check out some of these options and we can't wait to see you when you come and visit New York. Thanks. Bye.